one of the most annoying parts of being in business is dealing with your CRM. Wouldn't it be nice if there was some kind of less annoying CRM? Well, that's exactly what we're gonna to review today. Less annoying CRM helps you keep things simple and get more done. I do a lot of work with CRM and some of the most annoying things out there are the constant add-ons required to run your CRM. There's another add-on for this or there's another add-on for that. And after a while, the price is no longer the price. The price you originally decided to sign up for is like three, four, five times more because the features just aren't there in that standard base plan. But with less annoying CRM, everything is included in one price. That's pretty amazing. Another common gripe I have with CRM companies is that the support is often disinterested, but with less annoying CRM, their team are absolute legends. They have been with the company from the start. The average person has been there for at least five years. They know the system inside out and they're ready to jump on a call or chat with you on email to solve your problem. Less annoying CRM is for you if you've got less than 20 staff, or perhaps you're working in a sub team within a larger company. But generally, it's a simple get up and go tool that's really easy to use. So ditch the spreadsheets and get yourself set up with systems and automation, but without overdoing it so that you end up with some kind of Frankenstein. So let's have a look inside the platform and you can see what I mean. Here's one I prepared earlier. I've signed up for a trial and let's dig around and take a look. So we've got our dashboard here and we can see that there are tasks, pipeline reports, client engagements, and we've got the agenda view and an activity report. Now I've been able to add an extra activity report here by customizing the dashboard. You also do get this little agenda view so you can see what's coming up or what's happened previously. You can see I put in here, there was a site inspection and there was a meeting. So you can see what's coming up and also retrospectively what's happened already. Let's go into customize and on this workspace, I can add a widget. We can add an activity report, a pipeline, task, or agenda. So if you've got lots of pipelines, you can see them in parallel and see how each one is performing. And then on the record type itself, I can go into the settings gear and I can select whether I want all calendars or specific and whether I want them condensed or expanded. Let's go expanded. And then I can give it a custom name. I can reorder them as well and then I can also change whether I want them on the left or the right. You can also customize whether or not you want the calendar sidebar to appear. And that's pretty much it for the dashboard. Nice and simple. So let's go back home. And now we can see that we've got the calendar and here's the activity report, which we just selected as an expanded view. So now we're showing all of the details that are in the, the system. If I go into the search here, I can quickly and easily find the company that I created and the contact that I created. If I hover over the plus button here, we can see that we can add a contact, company, task event, the consulting lead and client engagement are two pipelines that I have set up in the system but you can customize those pipelines and their stages. If you hover over the contacts, we've got some contact groups that I created. Now groups are a great way to bring the contacts together so that we know what type of contact they are. I've added a high value or a nonprofit. You could have government, you could have small business, medium business, large, whatever you like. You can also have multiple groups assigned to an individual or to a company. If I go to view all contacts, now we can see the contact and the account that we've created. You've got the ability to search again here or select all and perform a bulk action. So the bulk action is we can attach, edit, export, or delete. If I come back over here, I can sort them. I can see the record type and I can add a filter. On the calendar page, we can see a simple calendar and you've got that day timeline view. So I can click and drag and create an event, give it a name, link it to uh, an attendee or, or a contact, set a reminder and then create the event. Uh, alternatively, if I go back through, I can see some events that I created before. This one was a site inspection and we can decide whether it's all day or whether it repeats. And then again, we've got those who's attending. So if you've got employees or if you've got contacts that you wanna add, you can select those into that event. Now there are different views on the calendar as well. We can see day view, week view, month, or agenda. The other way to look at this is uh, we can print it, see the different time zones, and decide whether we wanna show tasks. So if you wanna schedule your tasks in advance, 
you can put them on the calendar so that you know you're going to complete them on time. So under the reports, we can see the different pipelines. We've got the client engagement or the consulting lead. Now I've just created a test one in the consulting lead. And if I click into that, we can see that this is my test contact and you can see that they work at Meowington and you can, as I hover over, you can see that they are hyperlinks that are going to take you to that record. So this step in the pipeline phase, now you can customize these phases. And then we can see the source referral where they a new lead, where they referred by someone or they are past client. And then what services are required. So you can add some fields there. You can add also custom fields that help you to identify what it is that they want and or need. We can attach items and add a note or a task. So if you met with them and they said, yep, I'm super keen to go ahead. I'm just waiting for my refund to come through for something else. Then you can add a note there and create a task to follow up. You also get the history of the things that have changed along the way. So we add a note here. We can say waiting for some funds to come through and then we'll just save that one. So now in the history, you can see that note just here. If we head back over to contacts and let's go and click into our contact here, we can see that there's a task, which is I'm going to bring them some coffee. We can see that they're related to a consulting lead, which is that discovery call scheduled. And we can see they're in the group, the high value customer group. As we scroll down, we got some other basic contact info, some company info, and we can see here is the note that we just entered on the deal. And we've got the event, uh, I updated the lead, I also added another note previously, and that's when they were created. So we've got a decent history to be able to figure out what's gonna happen next. And if we hover over here, we can attach an event, task, group, file, relationship, consulting lead, and client engagement, etc. So a relationship is just a link between two different records. So you can link two individuals and call them a friend. If we go over to the contact actions over here, we can edit the contact, duplicate, merge, print, or delete. And also you've got those attaching options again as well. If we select edit contact, this is gonna bring up all of the fields. We can add their address, a bit of a background note of how we know them and why. Website, birthday, favorite coffee. I've added this one as a custom field and I'll show you how to do that. You've also got the ability to add a little image, which is nice to know what someone looks like when they walk in the door. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to my favorite spot and that is the settings. I've skipped over the profile so I don't have to show an email on screen, but basically that's where you can link your Google account your notification preferences here, just let you know when your email reminders and follow-ups come through from the system. You can select your display preferences, which is how you wanna see the date and time format, whether it's your time zone, 12 or 24 hour, start of the week, etc. And then you can set some rules for how the workflows are customized. Now I've just clicked on the billing and you don't normally get this when you are working with a software company. Normally they're trying to sell you and upsell you and cross sell you. But I like this note, it's really thinking about me as the business owner and it's saying, you don't need to pay yet. You can still work around on your trial, figure out if it's right for you. And then if it is, okay, let's go ahead. But no pressure. And I think that's really honest and forthright of that company and I really appreciate that. On the users, I can add new users here and you just pay per user so it's really simple. It's either on or it's not. Teams, when you've got a number of users in there, you might be able to delineate through teams such as your sales team, your operations team and your admin team, for example. Your company branding, this is where you get to add your logo and you'll notice that I have changed the color scheme to green, but you can select gray, magenta, purple, orange, etc. from here. So if I go back to the default view, save changes, now we can see it's back in the standard branding of LACRM. Close account, unlikely to do so. Integrations, there's quite a few integrations already out of the box, but you've also got the ability to connect in with Zapier, which then means you've got 5,000 plus other applications that Zapier connects to that you can then link and automate your business with. There are a number of other integrations here. Now in your email, you do have a way to integrate with your default email platform so they can bring information backwards and forwards. And you can also integrate with email marketing platform being MailChimp or any other mailing platform that you use via Zapier, as well as having a BCC email that can forward emails into this system. If we go into the calendar, if you wanna have different calendars for whatever reason, you can create them here and then give it another color.
I mentioned groups earlier, which are a great way to organize your contacts and just make sure that you really understand how you're approaching each contact. So I've got here nonprofit and then high value customer. So a high value customer I might give a little bit more attention to and a nonprofit I might give a bit of a discount to. So you can decide how you wanna group your contacts together. But the good thing is you can apply multiple groups to a contact. Pipelines, this is where you can customize your pipelines. So if I go into edit pipeline here, we can add additional states and then we can also customize the questions that are asked on the deal record itself. In the custom fields area, you can see we've got the contact and the company as well as the pipelines. So if I go into the contact record, we can see here, this is a custom field that I added before. And then we can also rearrange them. So if we wanna see the phone number ahead of the email address, then we can just move them like that. I added the favorite coffee, just in case I wanna bring someone a nice cup of coffee and I make sure that I get it just right. You can export all of your data, which is a great way to mass edit and clean and update. You can bulk merge duplicate contact. And if you're a programmer, you can access the API. Now, when you're just getting started, you might want to import a large number of contacts. To do that, you just head over to the add and you've got this import in bulk. So you can import from your calendar, you can import more options, but if we're going to go import contacts, we've now got the ability to select from a range of sources. So we can go from a spreadsheet, uh, different CRM, Google, Outlook, LinkedIn, Mac, and some others. Importing your contacts is generally one of the first few steps of getting started with a CRM. So I highly recommend you read through the useful knowledge articles that they have here. And they've got a ton of videos as well to help you along on how to implement the system. And as I mentioned earlier, the phone support is never too far away. You can sign up to Less Annoying CRM's generous trial by signing up with my affiliate link, which will be in the description below. A free trial is simple and there is no credit card required. So you can jump in and see for yourself how simple and easy it is to use. So there you have it. If you usually get frustrated with your CRM, remember that it's in the name, Less Annoying CRM. Sign up with my affiliate link in the description below. Thank you for watching.